Hello everyone and welcome back to the DCS Hornet Academy. Uh, today we're going to go over lesson number four. So in uh, lesson one we went over intro, in lesson two we went over the game menu, lesson three we went over hardware and key bindings. So at this stage, uh, if you are on lesson four, you basically have your hardware, you have it uh, you know how to do key bindings, you have an idea of what DCS is about, and you are ready to move to the next step. Typically, um, most uh, people would probably expect to go to jump into the aircraft and go flying. And um, uh, instead, here I'm going to be uh, going over a the mission editor, uh, which is freely available within DCS. It's a very powerful tool and it basically allows you to do just about anything and it is a very useful tool for student pilots and the uh, vast majority of people don't use it, don't know how to use it um, and it's really not that hard to use uh, and it really uh, a lot, you know, opens up a whole new world uh, within DCS uh, it's one of the reasons why I love DCS so much um, it's because it allows such great creativity by allowing the use of the mission editor. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. And uh, this particular video, we're just going to, or lesson, we're going to just go over the basics of the mission editor. And then in the future, I will do a more advanced uh, version of it. Um, the only things I'm going to show is basically a quick, hopefully, a quick overview of uh, the editor, uh, the tools, uh, which, and then um, some examples of the type of missions that uh, a student pilot would set up for themselves um, to go out and, and train and yes you can go on a server but uh, sometimes servers don't have exactly what you're looking for and it's very easy to set up a mission uh, in a no pressure environment to go and learn on your own uh, and practice things so uh, let's get started so the mission editor is this guy right here uh, you just click on it and you can create new mission or open a mission you open a mission, it's just like any other file. You go, you open it, and uh, like a Word document, uh, and it, it selects the mission. We're just going to go with uh, create new mission. Um, you have all the maps here. Um, obviously, you have to own the map to create the mission. I'm pretty sure um, I own all the maps, so I, I no, haven't tested that out. So let's start with Caucasus, which is the Black Sea map, and uh, it's the default map uh, that's free with DCS, uh, as along with Marianas. Um, and then you have here coalitions, which have blue, um, supposedly the good guys, red the, the bad guys, um, you know. And you have your 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 countries and your coalitions. Uh, some of them are historic, like you have uh, you know the um, USSR, you have the Third Reich, you know, like it's World War Two. Some are more modern countries. So we're gonna leave it at the D set uh, at the uh, sorry the uh, default setting and click OK. You can change this afterwards. So we'll let it load and meanwhile I'll look at this beautiful um, F-18 in the background. So uh, we'll zoom out. Um, so the first thing on the mission editor is with the scroll wheel. If you do forward you zoom in, if you do backward you zoom out. Uh, left click doesn't do anything, right click uh, you can pan the map. So that's that. This is the Caucasus map. It's in there on the Black Sea. You got uh, Ukraine here. You got uh, Turkey here. Uh, what do you call it? Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, Russia. All of these countries right here. And uh, this is uh, going to be kind of your home um, in DCS when you're first learning, most likely, because it has mountains and flat areas and uh, sea, and it's a, just a good, good old, old overall um, round map. Um, I do have another lesson plan for going over the map itself, maybe explaining a little bit, um, but uh, for now uh, I'm just going to focus on the mission editor. So this view right here uh, is basically uh, shows you the altitude differences, it's like a topographical map. Um, blue is sea, yellow, green is flatlands, and then it, this is the mountains and all that. Um, and if we zoom in, you can see in the C uh, on the bottom left here, you have coordinates and altitude. These are the coordinates, uh, you know, north and east things uh, of that point where the mouse is pointing. You can see it's moving, and that is the altitude. 
over the sea, it's the depth. So here you're like on the left side is minus 60 feet as depth, and then closer to the coast is like 20 or whatever. That's important because ships, some ships, uh, you know, can't get too close. Uh, they need a certain minimum depth, and of course, submarines um, need to go down. Um, so that's one thing. The other, uh, you can click here on Sat at the bottom, uh, and it has a satellite view of uh, of the map, um, kind of like Google Earth. And then you have the map view, which is a or aeronautical chart. It has aerospaces, and it's this is what um, in game you would use to do visual reference and visual navigation without any aids. Like let's say you know you're in a World War II bird, you're like, well, you know, there's um, you know, train tracks uh, and easily identifiable, identifiable landmarks like cities and lakes and airports and, 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 and rivers and whatnot. But ALT is where you're going to be most of the time, so when you're m designing a mission. Um, these are airports, Kobolady will be uh, your main airport, it's right here on the map. Um, this is an ILS, so we're not going to talk about that until later on when we talk about instrument uh, landing systems and approaches and stuff like that. Uh, these are NDBs, uh, again instrument related navigation beacons. We're going to focus on uh, just the very basics here um, and then we'll get into it a bit more later. So uh, we talked about the bottom here, uh, let's talk, the, f the top is a repetition of all the side items so we're not going to really go into much of that. But uh, let's start here on the side. So this is create new mission button, um, South Explanatory. This is opening a new mission. Uh, this is saving a mission. This is kind of like your office, you know, Word, whatever, same thing. Um, right here you have create mission briefing. If you click on that, this is text that people will see when you create and they enter your mission in a multiplayer mission or whatever, or use your mission, and you can have text for each of the coalitions, such as uh, it's just briefing material, right? Uh, next is the weather, um, so it's this panel here on the right opens up. So this is your month. Uh, for example, in June you have a lot less sun, more sunlight, and in, in winter months you have less sunlight. Um, so it changes your, your sunsets and sunrises, so that's what that is for. Uh, this slider is your time of day, so uh, you know this is 3 o'clock in the morning, whatnot. Uh, if you click on this, it says your sun and moon, uh, it shows you where the sun is, so this is at the top, it would be at 1.30, and uh, right here, like around 7 a.m., it's like really low, and then if you go night, you see the moon, um, it, it actually has sun and moon cycles, so very, um, so yeah, it tells you the sun, sunrise is at 5.50, sunset at 2110, and uh, so on and so forth, so you can set your, um, as you desire. Um, you have static dynamic weather, a dynamic I don't really use, I'll just use, you know, so just use static normally, most people do. Uh, you can set your temperature, uh, you click here, you can have all the clouds that uh, uh, you desire, um, the different types of clouds. Uh, you can change the cloud base level, level or layer, uh, you can set your pressure and then you can set your winds uh, at high altitude, medium altitude, low altitude, and at ground level. You would change, for example, at ground level you would say I want the winds to come from 180 and here you change it to like 10 knots and there you go, you got wind at 10 knots. Turbulence if you want that, fog and dust and all this stuff is kind of self-explanatory. Here you can set up, a, um, you know, there's default uh, like uh, thunderstorm and then you click this button, says load, and it loads uh, a thunderstorm conditions, like for wind and whatnot. Uh, if you want to go back to the default, you click default, and you click load, and there you go. So that's weather. Next one is uh, triggers. We we're not going to talk about that. It's an advanced feature of mission editing. We'll talk about it later. Uh, this one, mission goals, is well, what exactly what it sounds like. Uh, these, um, this next button here is battlefield combiners. This is mostly for combined arms. Remember that module I talked about where um, you can control ground units and ships and stuff like that. If you um, say, okay, in the blue side I want uh, three game masters. These are like multiplayer slots. Uh, tactical commanders and they can all um, operate all of those vehicles. If you click this button, then the pi each pilot that has combined arms can uh, take control of any of the vehicles on their coalition. That's all there is to that. 
Uh, this guy is changing coalitions. If you want to change uh, the coalition, you must say, hey, hey, Italy is a baddie today. And you say, okay, yeah, well, then you do that to do it that way. Next one is this green button is just to save it. Um, it's save the mission and then go fly it. So when you are in this mission editor and you click this uh, green button, it actually launches uh, that mission and you go into the game. It is hosted on your own machine and you're the only person, uh, multiplayer person. So it's kind of like single player. That same mission, you can then go in, say, um, uh, host like your own multiplayer server from your machine and uh, invite others to play. Um, so that's one thing. Or you can share the mission with the others and they can host it. And we'll talk about multiplayer later on. For now, the purpose is to generate a mission, including multiplayer missions uh, and slots, and uh, for training purposes. So we're not going to go into that. Below this green button, you got all your units. So you got the, this button is for aircraft, if you want to place aircraft on the map. This is for helicopters. This one below that is for um, ships. Then you have ground vehicles. Then you have uh, templates, which are groups of units that you want to kind of repeat over and over. Uh, and then you have statics, which are um, neither AI nor clients. And when I refer to a client, it's a spot in multiplayer for a, an aircraft. Uh, it's just static objects that uh, you know are part of the scenery that are destructible. Initial point, I have no idea what that is. Uh, probably uh, an initial point in your navigation for conducting attacks. Uh, bullseye, uh, we're not going to talk about. Uh, it's uh, some we're going to talk about later. Uh, trigger zone, same thing. Uh, and then unit list, uh, this, this is something that will pop up. The number of units once we populate it, I'll show you that guys later. Uh, set map options, you can show like what you want to show on the uh, map. Uh, do you want all green, like blue units, red units, neutral units, whatever. Uh, draw uh, is you want to draw on a map like, um, you know, do you want to show air spaces that you can't get into or stuff like that. And then this last one is a ruler. So if you want to say, hey, I want to fly from Kobuleti to like freaking uh, Sochi. Well, you do this. Um, sorry, the thing is a, is a right click or left click? Let's try this again. There you go. Uh, so you go from Kobuleti to Sochi. Uh, it's hard to see, but it's about 125 miles and it's uh, heading 312. So you can see as I'm moving this, it shows you. If you place the aircraft carrier here in the middle, it'll be about 100 miles. If you place it here, 70. So it's a good tool um, to measure distances. You can click it again, and it goes away. That's it. That is, I want to try to keep this super simple. This is literally all you need to know on how to manipulate the map. Now, let's say your Kabul Eddy is going to be your main home when we train here uh, in all, all, all of our videos. Um, so you will see as you zoom in, you have the runways, the taxiways, and all of these buildings, and you have all these numbers. These numbers are essentially spawn slots. So they're parking spots in which you can spawn. Some of these are hangars, like if we go to SAT, you'll see that these are enclosed the hangars, and these are open in the ramps. These are called the ramp areas. This is a taxiway, that's a runway. Uh, let's go to ALT again, and close this up. And uh, okay, so let's go here. And say we want to spawn in a Hornet. So you click on the aircraft button. That's your first step. Uh, click that. Then you click anywhere on the map. If you click on the green area, the first thing is going to be an A10. Um, so you can change that over here where it says type. You go to whatever type of aircraft. So we're going to go for an F-18. Right below that, it says veteran. So all of these are AI difficulties. The clear client and player are multiplayer slots. So if you want a multiplayer, if you want to go fly the thing, you gotta uh, select one of these. Player is generally for single player. There's no other client slots. Client just like um, you know is for multiple clients, but you can also have one, and uh, that's what you use for when you want multiplayer, uh, or even single player when you want to get into different uh, aircraft. If you want to get into it, or anybody else has to get into it, click client. Now, going back to the top, you got the group name. Um, I'm in the Sidewinder squadron, so we are, are called Sinus Winder. We'll call this Winder 1. A group is essentially a group of up to four aircraft, also referred to as a flight or a division, um, or a section or a light division, whatever. 
it's just a group of up to four aircraft uh, and it's that's how it is it's set up in DCS so for example here I have one but if I click again it's two three four if I click back uh, it, it removes them so that's as simple as what that is uh, task is like the AI task so do you want it to be an AI and we're not going to talk about that at this point but it's like do you want it to be anti-ship uh, do you want to anti-air whatever nothing means it's nothing and when it's a client I always set it to nothing right anyways pilot uh, would be in this case like say winder 1-1 one, one, right I am the first uh, aircraft in the winder 1 group uh, if you're 2 you would say winder 2-1-2 two, one, two. tail number I am 412 is for my modex uh, you can put whatever number you like it will some skins show it that uh, it will show the number Radio is, the, I think, the radio frequency you can contact uh, that uh, aircraft at. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think I've ever used it. Uh, call sign, uh, these are what the ATC in-game will call you. So uh, they're standard call sign. That Even so, I said winder, there's no winder here, right? But we are a snaky squadron, so we're going to go snake. So we're, I'm now snake 1-2. Uh, you can say these are we're not going to talk about their advanced stuff. The only other things you're going to worry about is this tab, this tab, and this tab. So we'll start from this tab, which is the simplest. These are the two radios on your F-18. They got 20 preset channels. You can either set these uh, manually, uh, and we're going to talk about more detail this when we talk about radios and communications. But uh, these are AM and FM frequencies in radio. These are your radio frequencies, and these are your preset channels. So when you go in an aircraft, you say, I'm going to go to channel 9. It's going to be 255 AM. This is where you can set that up in the mission. Back to this first tab, uh, you can set waypoints. We're going to talk about that maybe a bit later. And then we're going to say, this is the most important thing. So turning point means you're in the air. Flyover point is also you're in the air. Takeoff from runway will put you on a runway with the engines running. Takeoff from ramp will put you in one of these um, parking slots with your engines off. Takeoff from parking hot is you're going to set uh, the parking spot with your engines on so you don't have to turn on uh, your engines. Landing will put you on landing. Takeoff from ground will put you anywhere on the ground. doesn't have to be in one of these predefined spots. So let's try that. And then with this arrow key, you can change, you can see the orientation of the hornet is changing. So if I want to face it that way. And the uh, hot means you're going you to have your engines on. So in this case, if I go, um, if you put it, like, say, next to, like, 4, right? and I go uh, from ramp, it's going to put it, snap it to 4. Right next to you, you have all the parking spots. So Kobo Lady has 42 parking spots. If I want to go to spot 3, boom, it switches to 3. If I go to 2, it goes to 2, and back to 3, and so on. Uh, if I said turning point, this would be overflying Kobo Lady at this point, and the altitude would be 6,500. You can put any altitude here, any speed, any Mach. That's it. Uh, that is as simple as it is to put an aircraft and get flying in DCS in your own map, in whatever you want to do. That's why I wanted to do this lesson early so that uh, you guys can use this to train. So what we're going to do is uh, now do some examples of the type of missions that you could set for yourself while you're doing the lessons. So one of the first things, uh, one of the first lessons that we're going to do um, is going to be cold start. So we would be seeing from ramp and uh, okay, and the next tab that I wanted to talk about is the second tab. This is where you change your skins and your armament and um, your fuel uh, here on the right. Um, it changes your weight. This is your max takeoff weight is 51899 pounds. The percentage of your total weight that you are when you change your weapons, uh, it will change all that stuff. We'll put it at 100 and we'll select uh, a skin. All the skins are here. Some are come with the game, some you have to download and are. Um, you know, if it's a custom skin, right? So in my case, uh, we'll go for my um, Hornet uh, Sidewinder skin here. 412 is my Modex. Um, and that's it. Uh, for the payloads, I'm not going to go into too much detail right now, but all you got to know here is that you can have presets of payloads or you can make it manual. 
uh, each of these are stations so for example this this station here uh, we can put like uh, an aim 9 by just right clicking going to AA missiles and aim 9 and on station 9 is the opposite is the last one here on the left there is no aim 9 uh, right next to it I could put like a bomb like Okay, so that's on the other side, sorry. Uh, so yeah, now you have bombs there, right? Uh, and then if you go remove payload, it removes it, and uh, there, there's the winder, side winder gone. Um, we're gonna talk about more about that when we're gonna arm. So when you do it here, the aircraft is gonna spawn into the mission uh, as you have set it, and uh, but you can also change it inside the game once you're loaded in. Um, if the airfield has the logistics and you which typically they have unlimited stuff and you can just do it there too so you can do it in the mission editor or in the game uh, here are the some of the presets on um, so you can go and change all of your uh, things uh, here are all the ones that I have built uh, for myself so for example this one has you know a bunch of laser guided bombs uh, these are, has a bunch of Mavericks, uh, this has a mix of Mavericks and bombs, so on and so forth, right? So, um, so for now we'll say there's nothing on it, and then we will go and, uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about there. So that's where you change your, your uh, details of your aircraft, it was in the second tab here. Just remember to go to the second tab. Uh, anytime you click out it will go back if you click on this blue button uh, F is stands for fighter uh, and if you click on the icon all the details of that fighter come up and that's as simple as it is so we're gonna go to this third button here on the top left save um, we're gonna save it as uh, uh, lesson for demonstration um, you can change the name here they say you're right yes and so we've saved it as lesson for uh, mission editor demonstration. Now if you click on the button we're gonna go and see what this looks like. I will confirm that uh, you wanna save. You press start. This is where your briefing would come normally. Anything you write in the briefing would show here and it has standard stuff like uh, your weather and stuff and whatnot. Your date. So let's click and see what that looks like in Kabuleti right now when we have this so this is your client slots that I was talking about right now we only have one F-18 that's that's the modex the faction um, its task its group name and where it's located right if you had 50 other aircraft they would all show up here if they were clients so click here we can only choose one aircraft so let's go and choose it and it's gonna load us right into the cockpit say fly and let me set up my track IR real quick uh, and then we can go ahead and um, look around so with the head tracker as I mentioned you can just look around so we are here on Kobaletti that's the weather we chose it's daytime there's a bunch of clouds I didn't really mess with all that and uh, we are in a cold jet, meaning the engine, is, nothing is on, everything is off. And uh, then if we press F2, we can go to the outside. Uh, and uh, with the mouse, you can look around your aircraft. With the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. So uh, we'll go. So F1 is cockpit, F2 is outside, F3 is a flyby, like, and F4 is like this. Uh, right next to the aircraft. Um, F6 is for, uh, I don't know if I want to go into that, but F6 is for your um, munitions that, like your missiles and bombs that use uh, camera. Uh, F7 is ground units um, that you can cycle through. F9 is uh, for your uh, naval units and F10 is your map. So F10, if you go to F10, you'll see that just like in the mission editor, your uh, and you can change it to SAT and map and all this other stuff. That's the that's and and it will say that we are here. Uh, F is our Snake 11 was our call sign, remember? And um, uh, this is our aircraft. It shows that we are on the third slot in Kobo Lady and we are a fighter type aircraft. So that's that. And uh, so. 
in the cold start mission like after you see the lesson on how to do that you would um, basically um, you know uh, do what we just did in this mission and you would come here and you would call, try to practice cold starting your jet and that's all you need to do and then if you wanted to restart it again you can load it back in and do all that stuff right so that's that so that's a cold start so let's quit go to the mission editor now let's change it to a hot start from parking hot click the green button click yes click start double click and it will take you to the plane <coughs> click fly and now uh, you should be able to hear the engines right? Uh, if you want to get rid of this bar at the bottom that has information on the aircraft you press control Y Y twice control Y to bring it on control Y Y to bring it off and uh, yeah it's something that is if you don't have a clean uh, so there you go we have our jet that is on with our screens and everything is already started up. So quit. Next, uh, I'm gonna keep it in the same exact position just to show you what it looks like. So turning point, now we're gonna go to 15,000 feet and we're gonna go to 350 knots and we're gonna press the same button. Now it's gonna start us in the air, in that position, in that direction, um, <coughs> but we're going to be at 15,000 feet flying. And all I did is I changed that uh, setting that I just showed you guys. So here we are. Uh, this is the external view, F2 again. And now we are in the air. Uh, and in the f one of the first few lessons, we're going to be practicing flying just in the air. No landings, no takeoffs. That's going to be actually lesson number one. And uh, yeah, so you can, you know, go ahead and uh, um, practice your flying uh, as simply as that. There's like no other enemy aircraft. There is um, it's just you, your map that you've set up, and uh, you can fly to your heart's content, right, uh, without any bother. So very cool. Uh, go back So again, that was in the air. It looks like it's on the ground, but it's not right. So there's that um, Another example is a uh, takeoff from the um, Ground hot Let's say we do that and we want to take off from this um, runway here which uh, By the way, it's very short and typically you can't take off from uh, here, it's, it's, there's no spawn points, but I put it there and I put it on the ground, and uh, you will see that now it will place us on the ground in a hot condition on that runway. And it could be also grass, could be middle of a desert, doesn't matter, right? So here we are. If I go F2, zoom out, and that is that runway. You can see it's a very short runway. So let's try to take off real quick. Uh, we'll go full flaps, full burner, and see if uh, we can take off. Uh, and I should probably set my. I wonder if it set my uh, trim. This is probably gonna end up bad. No, well, never mind. We we took off. There you go. So we just placed the unit there, and you're like. <coughs> Um, and this is like the, the, the freedom that you can have, it's like, you don't, like what if you don't have a server, right, that has that runway, and you want to be like, hey, I want to take off from that runway, right? Well, um, now you can, right? And you just place your unit there, and, uh, and you can take off from it, so, very cool. Very cool that you can do that. And, you, and if I wanted to, I could take off, uh, you know, from like the grass here or anything like that. So, anyways, all right. So let's quit. 
So that shows you how to place a unit. If I wanted to fly another aircraft, um, yeah, we're not going to get into that. You can just go and change that. Uh, what else? Okay, that is primarily the main thing that you're going to be doing. So now let's go back to Kobuleti. So all you do is you drag this guy here, or you could create like a new one. You can delete it, create a new one, whatever. Um, but let's drag him back here. Um, let's put him take off from runway this time. So you go take off from runway, and it's gonna select Kobuleti runway, um, whichever is the direction that uh, based on the wind and whatnot. And let's go to weather, and let's uh, go ahead and do a night. Uh, we'll, we'll do like a full moon type of deal and uh, we'll show you th how that looks like so now it should spawn us on the runway engines on with a full moon uh, type of night right so let's go here there you go this place us on the runway look at that it's uh it's at night uh you know when we get into the advanced flying with the night flying <coughs> Uh, you know, with the, um, you can, oh, I don't have my engine B NVG set up, but, uh, yeah, anyways, basically you can, um, look at that, the moon is behind the, the clouds there, um, Anyways, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's what night flying looks like in DCS. Just a little preview for you guys. Um, very cool, you know. And um, you got all your lights and. Just it's it's just a whole new game, right? It's a very cool experience to be flying at night, um, but obviously it's down the line. We're not gonna do that. But uh, just to show you how quickly uh, you know you can change the uh, the settings. Now let's go back. Let's go to daytime, and let's get uh, stormy weather. So you go here. Say I want a heavy. Uh, heavy thunderstorm and you load that and then you go the storm is separate from your clouds but uh, then you would go to uh, up here to your clouds and you would say uh, overcast rain tree uh, and then it should put you on daytime with with rain right so if you're like hey I want to train today and I want to train with rain as long as you know you can still see things right um, then you can do that. That's as as, as easily as you can uh, set up a uh, rainy day. Look at that. There you go. Right there. All the rain on the canopy. Runway is closed. Please wait. Great. <laughs> All right, so that's how you change your weather conditions and everything. Um, the other thing, okay, say, uh, so you can go, you can do your practice or your landings or takeoff, but let's say you wanted to um, be a, just practice your approaches, right? So you're like, uh, this is how you set up, up, that up. You take your ruler, you say, okay, I showed you the ruler tool before, right? Say you wanna start, at uh, you know whatever like four miles right here so you're like okay that's four miles I'm gonna take my guy I'm gonna put him there then you go add here uh, this is where we're gonna start looking at uh, waypoints real quick so you say add um, let's get rid of that um, uh, thingy for uh, the ruler say add and then you just point somewhere in the direction of Kobuleti and it'll put a waypoint so let's say you pass here the runway right there so it'll just get you started in that direction then say you want to be at like a uh, thousand feet 
and you want to be at uh, say 230 knots uh, so you say OK, save, and uh, you press OK. I don't know if it's still raining, I think it is, so I might not see the runway, but uh, let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, crosswind and everything. <laughs> uh, let's get the radar altimeter to see if uh, we're... Uh, Make sure we don't crash. <laughs> uh, oh, it puts us at 6,000 feet, that's why. So you can kind of Altitude. make up the ground. Altitude. So let's go down um, below the cloud layer here. Wow, we're just going sideways. Look at that. There's so much wind. But anyways, um, this is not the approach that you want to be doing. Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, this is just to show you guys. Look how much crosswind there is. There's a there's like a crazy thunderstorm right now. Um, so, anyways, that's is like you could practice doing your. Uh, let me turn that off. Oh no, yeah, um, yeah. So it, you would basically practice doing your crosswind landings and uh, yeah, try landing in these conditions. Not easy not easy at all. So yeah, that's how you practice it. Um, you practice and then you can just over and over you can just practice your straight in approaches. Uh, the other last thing that I'll show you because the video is getting super long. Uh, let's say that you have your waypoint. Um, so let's say you're over the sea here and let's put the weather back to a normal day. So let's go here, load, uh, default weather, load and let's go to uh, up here we'll say uh, light scattered or whatever so we're our and save so let's say you're here in a beautiful day and um, so yeah you have your first waypoint and you can go through the waypoints by clicking these arrows so yeah that's waypoint one that's zero and there's two waypoints right so you go to one you say add I wanna go here 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 and here if you uh, this yellow is the waypoint that is currently selected. If you go click on this arrow, you can go back. You can see now that we're on waypoint 3. You can change each waypoint's um, altitude and speed, and, and um, it'll just you know show you. Uh, it doesn't really matter as, as much. It's mostly a horizontal thing. But um, um, yeah, it, this, this will appear in your systems, in your aircraft, once you do it, and you can also do it within in, in the jet itself, but you can do it on the mission editor. Uh, so yeah, that's how waypoints work. Uh, but let's say we just have one waypoint. Uh, say we are going this way, and we are at uh, 15,000 feet. We're doing 300 knots. And let's say you want to practice formation flying, so you, cr you get another aircraft. In fact, you don't even have to do that, but let's, okay, let's do that. Um, in fact, actually the easiest way is, um, the easiest way is you click on your own fighter, you can place Control C and Control V, and it will copy it, okay? Uh, you point in a roughly the same direction, you change it to, say, uh, Ace, and then we will go ahead and change the type to the name of We'll call it the bomber, and uh, the name of the pilot is Bomber Dude. And um, yeah, okay. This you can change all this stuff uh, the way you want it, but essentially, then you go here and we go select the bomber. So let's see if we can get a cool bomber. Where's the bees? B one B or B two? Which 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 one is cooler? B two B two is probably cooler. So we have a B2, um, yeah, so we're flying at 15,000 feet, 300 knots, um, B2 is also, B2 is, let's make it 300 knots as well, and uh, then what you do is come here and make sure that he's a bit closer, put him like in front of you, right? 
and then put them in the rough, roughly in the same direction, like in a direction. Doesn't matter. Like make it go that way. Click OK. And what this is going to do is going to spawn the B2. It's going to spawn you both at 15,000 feet, 300 knots, and you can practice your formation flying. It's that easy. It's that simple, right? You'll uh, press fly. There he is. Let's get on his uh. Um, right wing and uh, this is as simple as it would be to to like practice formation flying say with uh, this guy's accelerating for some reason I must have messed up he's probably going to 400 knots let's catch up um, so yeah and uh, you know you can put him in a turn you can do all sorts of things you can ask him um, To, and th this is a good way to just like once we go through formation flying, right? You, this is how you would practice. Uh, or, I mean, it's one of the ways you can practice. And obviously, I'm doing a very bad job at it because this guy is accelerating, and I'm trying to get the video, um, you know, to end here. But um, yeah, so yeah, you could put him on a turn do all sorts of things. There he is, coming up. Woo! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, formation flying is one of those things, um, uh, it never gets easy. Nah, I'm kidding. Uh, Looks pretty much smaller when you're flying in formation with the guy. This thing is a huge, uh, it's a huge beast. It's also hard. I never flew in formation with a B2 before. Um, Altitude. Altitude. Appa apparently he's going down. I mean, that's that's just. Um, Crazy things happening, and I can probably say you know why that's happening. It's probably because um, if I go to the B1 and I go, he starts at that, but I bet you, yeah, see, it goes down to a thousand feet, four hundred twenty knots, which is what you don't want it to do. So the way to fix that is you would say fifteen thousand feet, and you would keep him at three hundred. So now your his waypoint th zero and his waypoint one are both at the same speed, so he shouldn't do all that crazy shit that uh, he was doing. Um, but yeah, uh, just as a quick example, if you wanted him to turn, like, uh, so you could, uh, you could have him do that, do a bit of a turn, I mean, that's kind of a crazy turn, but, uh, delete, edit, yeah, waypoints, uh, let's see if that's better, real quick, and then we'll end it there. Um, so that'll, that'll cover most of, um, what you will need to be practicing anyways. Um, I guess I'll show quickly a ship as well, how to put a ship down, or, uh, some of, some of the other units, right? See, the thing about, um, AI is they turn very suddenly. You see, you see how crazy that turn was that he did? Um... So that's you know you probably want to practice with a human wing more so, but uh, it's still good practice, right? Um, so let's try to catch up to him again. He's accelerating for some reason. So like human human players will n not I act as erratically as this, right? It's like look at this, he's just like pulling his <laughs> brakes out. But anyways, we're for line formation now with him. Um, I don't know what he's doing, but I mean it's good practice either way, right? Like if you you don't know what he's doing and. Uh, you know, you get a 
learn how to manage your so he's a, he's in a pretty constant turn but like you see that was pretty crazy a human pilot would never do that so uh, so maybe you want to put him in constant circles rather than you know these you know change the directions that quickly but um, like you can tell him to orbit so you could say hey uh, let's delete that that and that and what you can do is say okay go to uh, waypoint one then you click advanced add perform task and you say orbit and you can say a circle or because it's only one point um, or sometimes they'll say racetrack right and they will say what speed so you say 300 so what he'll do is he'll go to point one and he'll start orbiting in a, in a circle I'm pretty sure if I added like a second one uh, the racetrack one will also show up as an option I see racetrack will go between one and two so anyways um, that's that we will probably cover uh, that a lot in more a lot more detail now let's say you wanted to add a ship um, like a carrier you, know, you go to ships you click in the middle there and then you would uh, say okay I want a carrier and I want the um, Abraham Lincoln and then I'll show you later on um, how to create groups so it's like the, a battle group is, is considered a group but that's what you do is you put uh, its direction you can add waypoints you say okay I want this ship to go here and then here and then here and then here or whatever right and you can set the wind I show you guys how to set the wind you want the carrier to go into the wind uh, usually about uh, 27 knots over the deck and uh, you can practice landing on your carrier um, or doing flybys or doing pattern work, right? So uh, when we get into carrier ops, uh, you can create your own little thing. Uh, last thing I'll show you, I think, is the ground unit. So when we get, just to show you that how easy it is, so you just click there, and you say, I want a Russian, I want a um, sorry, the, sorry, ground unit is this other guy. I want it to be Russian. I want it to be uh, armor, and I want it to be a uh, T. Where is that? Where are the tanks? Where are the tanks at? Main battle tank T90, right? Put it here. Um, you, you can click on this second tab here, um, as I showed you before. Uh, you can zoom in, zoom out, and this is the tank that is going to be sitting here. Same thing. You can click Add and say one two three four and it's going to go in circles at 11 knots um, you can uh, we're going to go into more detail that, about that later on how to set up ground units and ground targets when we get into um, trying to bomb something but you know at the very minimum you can you know do that uh, you, you can just uh, and you can click on him Control C and then Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V, and there you go. You got yourself, uh, you know, six targets that you can go bomb. Um, and uh, yeah, you can just yeah, I'm not gonna show it, but yeah, you can go into the launch it, and uh, these guys will show. It. Actually, let me just quickly show you what that looked like. So you click that, and it's F7 to see ground units. That's what I wanted to show you. So you climb into your cockpit, you're flying, whatever. Um, you can go to your F10 map right away. So you go to F10. So there we are flying. And then here's our T90s showing on the map. You click on any one of them, like this one, and you cl click F7. Then boom, there's there's our T90s. Um, under the clouds, it's kind of hard to see right now, but uh, they're there. Right? And we are like out, out to sea, just flying around. So you can come back and bomb the crap out of these guys if you wanted to. So uh, that's it. Um, sorry, I just can't resist. <laughs> uh, that's it for the mission editor. Um, how to place units? How to get place client units? 
hot starts, cold starts, uh, starts from runways, starts from ground, from air, how to change altitudes, how to change speeds, how to place a friendly aircraft that you can formation fly with, um, how to place uh, units, uh, if you wanted to place static units as the last thing, I guess, uh, if you want to make it really cool, you're like, hey, I'm going to spawn here in spot 9, let's put a static unit. So you go to, remember, this guy here, this bridge looking thing, you click that, and uh, you can say USA, and you can say airfield and deck equipment, right? And you place it down there, um, and what you can do is you click on it and then use your arrow keys and you can say hey I want a cow or I want uh, like a dude I want like uh, it shows like uh, oh ships yeah you can do ships but uh, you could do um, structures um, you know you you have all these uh, like a wind turbine you want a wind turbine in there um, you can go browse through all the structures you can put helicopters you like this is a static helicopter, right? I'm just gonna sit there and uh, look pretty, and uh, that's it. So if you want a cow there, you put a cow, and when you spawn in your jet, you can have a cow next to you, right? You can have aircraft structures or whatever. Um, these will not be AI controlled, and they're just there to make the space look a bit prettier. And that's it. Um, yeah, as I said, push the green button, and you're in your own mission. And in some other lesson, I will show you guys how to uh, host this as a multiplayer mission on your own machine where somebody can look up, uh, you can password protect it if you want it private. And you can invite your friends um, to join your mission and fly with you. So you could have two F-18s or five F-18s and, f and a bunch of friends and you're all flying together. Of course, when that happens, you know, it's more recommended that you join a multiplayer community where I have servers but uh, this if you just want to go you and your buddy and you want to do something specific this is how you do it so um, that was intro to mission editing um, it gets a lot more complicated obviously uh, but this is for the purposes of the lessons that are coming up this is important I thought for everybody to know because it's extremely easy to put down an aircraft and do specific trainings whether it's formation flying, landing, takeoffs, cold starts uh, you want to visit different types of airports uh, you want different types of um, uh, weather conditions uh, wind conditions it's very easy to update so hopefully you found that helpful and this will help you get your first mission started. Um, look forward um, to you guys creating your first missions. And um, yeah, we'll delve into mission editing a lot more later on To um, as we talk about, for example, when we get into carrier ops or into a um, tanking, I will show you guys how to set up like a air-to-air -air tank refueling tanker. Um, so you can go and practice air-to-air -air refueling and um, when we get to weapons I'll show you guys how to um, set up targets on the ground uh, in the sea in the air and uh, get you guys into the rabbit hole of mission editing okay so that is it I think the next lesson I think it was gonna be knee boards <laughs> but I'm, I'm questioning whether I want to do that as a because I really want to get into the flying and I don't want you guys to get super bored um, so I might just start going to the Hornet intro and then one after that will be the cold start and the one after that we're gonna be flying so maybe one more maybe one more on knee boards maybe I'll combine it um, and I think there was actually one where I wanted to go over the Caucasus map but I might combine it uh, with the flying so stay tuned Lesson 5, well, if not 5, so definitely Lesson 6, we're going to get into the jet. And we'll get you guys going with your uh, F-18C Hornet uh, course, learning that aircraft. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you in Lesson 5. Take care.